A white police officer arrests a black doctor, accusing him of stealing medical supplies. Stay tuned to find out if the doctor actually was a thief. Before we get into the story, comment below where you are tuning in from. And if you enjoy this tale, don't forget to subscribe. Dr. Elijah Washington stood at the entrance of Mercy General Hospital, his silhouette framed by the soft glow of the early morning sun. The bustling city of Springfield was just beginning to wake, but for Dr. Washington, it had been another sleepless night filled with life and death decisions. Little did he know, this day would bring a challenge unlike any he had faced before. As he stepped through the sliding doors, a voice called out, Hello? The familiar faces of nurses and orderlies greeted him as he made his way to the locker room. Dr. Washington's reputation preceded him, a brilliant surgeon with a heart of gold known for going above and beyond for his patients. His dark skin gleamed with a thin sheen of sweat, evidence of the jog he took, to clear his mind before each shift. As he changed into his scrubs, his mind wandered to the faces of those he'd treated recently. The old woman with arthritis who couldn't afford her medication, the young boy with asthma whose parents were struggling to make ends meet. Each story weighed heavily on his conscience, a burden he carried willingly. Dr. Washington's reverie was interrupted by a commotion in the hallway. Raised voices echoed off the sterile walls, growing louder with each passing second. Curiosity peaked. He stepped out of the locker room, his brow furrowed with concern. The sight that greeted him sent a chill down his spine. Two police officers stood at the nurse's station, their faces set in grim determination. Behind them, a cluster of wide-eyed staff members whispered among themselves, stealing furtive glances in his direction. Dr. Elijah Washington, the taller of the two officers, a man with steel-gray hair and piercing blue eyes, stepped forward. Yes, that's me, Dr. Washington replied, his voice steady despite the unease growing in the pit of his stomach. Is there a problem, officer? The second officer, a younger man with a neatly trimmed beard, produced a folded piece of paper from his pocket. We have a warrant for your arrest, Dr. Washington. You're being charged with theft of medical supplies from this hospital. The words hit Dr. Washington like a physical blow. His mind reeled, struggling to process the accusation. There must be some mistake, he stammered, his usual eloquence deserting him. I would never... You have the right to remain silent, the older officer intoned, cutting him off. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. As the officer continued reciting his rights, Dr. Washington's gaze swept across the faces of his colleagues. Some looked away, unable to meet his eyes. Others stared in open shock, disbelief etched across their features. And there, at the edge of the crowd, stood Nurse Sarah Jensen, her hand clasped over her mouth, tears welling in her eyes. The cool metal of the handcuffs against his wrists jolted Dr. Washington back to the present. This was really happening. He was being arrested, accused of a crime he knew he hadn't committed. As the officers began to lead him away, his mind raced, searching for an explanation, a way to make sense of this nightmare. Just then, the elevator doors slid open and out stepped Dr. Marcus Blackwell, the hospital's administrator. His eyebrows shot up in surprise at the scene before him. What in God's name is going on here? He demanded, his voice cutting through the tense atmosphere. Dr. Washington is being arrested for theft of medical supplies, the younger officer explained, his tone clipped and professional. Dr. Blackwell's face paled, Surely there's been some misunderstanding, he said, looking from the officers to Dr. Washington and back again. Elijah is one of our most respected physicians. This can't be right. Dr. Washington felt a surge of gratitude for his colleagues' support, but it did little to quell the panic rising in his chest. As he was led towards the exit, he caught snippets of hushed conversations around him. I can't believe it, one nurse whispered. Dr. Washington? A thief? There's got to be more to this story, another replied. He's always been so dedicated to his patients. The walk through the hospital corridors felt like an eternity. 
With each step, Dr. Washington could feel the weight of accusation pressing down on him, threatening to crush his spirit. But beneath the fear and confusion, a spark of determination flickered to life. He knew he was innocent, and he would fight to prove it. As they approached the hospital's main entrance, Dr. Washington caught sight of his reflection in the glass doors. The man staring back at him looked lost, vulnerable. A far cry from the confident surgeon who had walked through those same doors just an hour ago. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for what lay ahead. Outside, a small crowd had gathered, alerted by the police presence. Among them, Dr. Washington spotted familiar faces, patients he had treated, families he had comforted. Their expressions ranged from shock to disbelief to disappointment. The sight sent a pang of anguish through his heart. As he was guided towards the waiting police cruiser, a voice cut through the murmurs of the crowd. Dr. Washington. He turned to see Mrs. Rodriguez, an elderly patient he had treated just last week, pushing her way to the front. This can't be true. You saved my life. You're a good man. Her words, filled with their unwavering faith, gave Dr. Washington a moment of strength. He managed a small, grateful smile in her direction before being ushered into the back of the police car. As the door closed and the car pulled away from the curb, Dr. Washington's mind whirled with questions. Who had accused him? Why? And how could he possibly prove his innocence? The hospital, his sanctuary for so many years, grew smaller in the rearview mirror. Dr. Washington closed his eyes, trying to center himself. He knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but he was determined to fight, not just for himself, but for every patient who depended on him, for every life he had sworn to protect. As the police cruiser wove through the morning traffic, carrying him towards an uncertain future, Dr. Elijah Washington made a silent vow. He would uncover the truth, clear his name, and return to the place where he belonged, helping those in need, no matter the cost. What? The ride to the police station was a blur of conflicting emotions for Dr. Washington. Fear, anger, confusion, and determination warred within him as he watched the familiar streets of Springfield pass by. He had driven these same roads countless times, rushing to the hospital for emergencies or heading home after long shifts. Now, handcuffed in the back of a police car, everything looked different, alien and hostile. Officer Jake Miller, the younger of the two policemen, glanced back at Dr. Washington through the rearview mirror. There was a hint of uncertainty in his eyes, as if he wasn't entirely comfortable with the situation. We're almost there, Dr. Washington, he said, his voice softer than before. Just hang tight. Dr. Washington nodded, not trusting himself to speak. His mind was racing, trying to piece together how this could have happened. He knew he hadn't stolen anything. Every supply he'd ever taken from the hospital had been used for legitimate medical purposes. But how could he prove that? And who would have accused him of such a thing? As they pulled into the parking lot of the Springfield Police Department, Dr. Washington felt a renewed sense of dread. The imposing brick building loomed before him, a far cry from the healing environment of Mercy General. This was a place of judgment, of punishment, not of compassion and care. The older officer, whose name tag read Detective Frank Harrison, opened the car door. Watch your head, he said gruffly as he helped Dr. Washington out of the vehicle. The detective's face was impassive, giving no hint of his thoughts on the situation. As they led him into the station, Dr. Washington couldn't help but notice the stares from other officers and staff. News traveled fast in a small city like Springfield, and he realized with a sinking feeling that his reputation might already be irreparably damaged. The booking process was a humiliating ordeal. Fingerprints, mugshots, personal belongings cataloged and stored away. With each step, Dr. Washington felt more and more like a criminal, despite knowing in his heart that he was innocent. Finally, he was led to an interrogation room, a small, stark space with a metal table, two chairs, and a large mirror that he assumed was two-way glass. Officer Miller removed the handcuffs, the relief in Dr. Washington's wrists only a small comfort in the face of his current situation. 
Someone will be with you shortly, Officer Miller said, a hint of sympathy in his voice. Would you like some water? Dr. Washington nodded, his throat suddenly dry. Yes, please. And is there any chance I could make a phone call? I need to contact my lawyer. Officer Miller hesitated, then nodded. I'll see what I can do. Sit tight, Dr. Washington. As the door closed behind the young officer, Dr. Washington was left alone with his thoughts. Dinona was he Nidui? He stared at his reflection in the mirror, barely recognizing the man who looked back at him. How had his life changed so dramatically in just a few short hours? He thought of his patients, the surgeries he was supposed to perform that day. Who would take care of them? Would they hear about his arrest? The thought of letting them down, of leaving them without the care they needed, was almost unbearable. The door opened and Detective Harrison entered, carrying a file folder and a cup of water. He set the water in front of Dr. Washington, who gratefully took a sip. Dr. Elijah Washington, the detective began, his tone businesslike. I'm sure you understand the seriousness of the charges against you. Theft of medical supplies is a grave offense, especially for someone in your position. <sighs> Dr. Washington leaned forward, his hands clasped tightly on the table. Detective, I assure you, there's been a terrible mistake. I have never stolen anything from the hospital. Every supply I've used has been for legitimate medical purposes. Detective Harrison raised an eyebrow. Is that so? Then perhaps you can explain why the hospital's inventory shows significant discrepancies over the past six months. Discrepancies that seem to coincide with your after-hours access to the pharmacy. Dr. Washington's heart sank. He knew exactly what the detective was referring to, but how could he explain without implicating himself further? The truth was complicated morally fraught, and potentially illegal. Detective, he began carefully, I understand how this looks, but I assure you there's more to this story than what the numbers show. I've dedicated my life to helping people, to saving lives. I would never do anything to jeopardize that. The detective leaned back in his chair, his eyes never leaving Dr. Washington's face. Then enlighten me, doctor. What exactly have you been doing with those supplies? Dr. Washington took a deep breath, weighing his options. He could tell the truth about the patients who couldn't afford their medications, about the makeshift clinic he'd been running out of his garage on weekends. But would that help his case or only make things worse? Before he could respond, there was a knock at the door. Officer Miller poked his head in. Sorry to interrupt, detective. Dr. Washington's lawyer is here. Relief washed over Dr. Washington as a familiar face entered the room. Sarah Goldstein, a sharp-minded attorney he'd known since college, strode in with purpose. This interview is over, she announced, her voice firm. My client won't be answering any more questions without me present, and I'd like a moment alone with him, please. Detective Harrison looked annoyed, but nodded, gathering his files. We'll continue this later he said, fixing Dr. Washington with a stern gaze before leaving the room. As soon as the door closed, Sarah turned to Dr. Washington, concern etched on her face. Elijah, what on earth is going on? Theft of medical supplies? This isn't like you at all. Dr. Washington slumped in his chair, the events of the day finally catching up with him. Sarah, it's not what they think. I haven't stolen anything, not really, but the truth it's complicated. Sarah pulled up a chair next to him, her voice softening. Then tell me everything, Elijah. From the beginning, we'll figure this out together, I promise. As Dr. Washington began to explain, he felt a glimmer of hope for the first time since his arrest. With Sarah by his side, maybe he had a chance of clearing his name and returning to the work he loved. But as he delved into the details of what he'd been doing, he realized that the road ahead would be far from easy. The truth might set him free, but it could also destroy everything he'd worked for. As he spoke, Dr. Washington couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a long and difficult journey, one that would test not only his innocence, but also his deepest beliefs about justice, compassion, and the true meaning of being a healer. Detective Laura Hawkins sat at her desk, 
poring over the file spread before her. The harsh fluorescent lights of the precinct cast long shadows across her face, accentuating the dark circles under her eyes, evidence of too many late nights and not enough sleep. But this case demanded her full attention, and Laura was nothing if not thorough. The arrest of Dr. Elijah Washington had sent shockwaves through the community. A respected physician accused of stealing medical supplies, it was the kind of story that made headlines and set tongues wagging. But Laura knew better than to trust headlines or gossip. Her job was to find the truth, no matter where it led. She picked up a photo of Dr. Washington, studying his face, kind eyes, a warm smile, not the typical visage of a criminal. But Laura had been on the force long enough to know that appearances could be deceiving. A knock on her office door interrupted her thoughts. Come in, she called, not looking up from the file. Officer Jake Miller, fresh-faced and eager, stepped into the room. Detective Hawkins, I've got those witness statements you asked for. Laura nodded, gesturing for him to set the papers on her desk. Thanks, Miller. Anything stand out to you? The young officer hesitated for a moment before speaking. Well, ma'am, it's just everyone seems to have nothing but good things to say about Dr. Washington. Patients, colleagues, even the janitorial staff. They all swear he's incapable of theft. Laura leaned back in her chair, considering this information. Character witnesses are important, Miller, but they don't tell the whole story. What about the evidence that led to his arrest? Miller shuffled through his notes. The hospital reported discrepancies in their inventory over the past six months, mostly painkillers and antibiotics. Security footage shows Dr. Washington accessing the pharmacy after hours on several occasions. And no one thought to question this before now? Laura asked, her brow furrowing. Apparently, it's not uncommon for doctors to access the pharmacy for emergencies, but the quantities missing, they don't match up with any patient records. Laura nodded, absorbing the information. All right, Miller, good work. I want you to dig deeper into those hospital records check for any patterns, any anomalies, and get me everything you can on Dr. Washington's background, financials, personal life, the works. As Officer Miller left to carry out her orders, Laura turned her attention back to the file. Something about this case didn't sit right with her. The evidence seemed damning, but her instincts told her there was more to the story. She picked up her phone, dialing a familiar number. After a few rings, a gruff voice answered. Mercy General, Dr. Blackwell speaking. Dr. Blackwell, this is Detective Laura Hawkins. I'm investigating the case involving Dr. Washington. I was hoping you could answer a few questions. There was a pause on the other end of the line. Of course, Detective. Although I must say, I'm still in shock over this whole situation. Elijah, Dr. Washington, he's one of our best. Laura made a non-committal sound, jotting down notes as she spoke. Can you tell me about Dr. Washington's work at the hospital? Any recent changes in behavior? Unusual requests? Dr. Blackwell's sigh crackled through the phone. Detective, the only unusual thing about Elijah is his dedication. The man works himself to the bone, takes on the toughest cases, volunteers at free clinics on his days off. If anything, I've had to force him to take vacation time. And the missing supplies? Laura pressed. Did you notice anything suspicious before the official audit? Honestly, no, Dr. Blackwell admitted. Our pharmacy is usually well stocked. It wasn't until the quarterly inventory that we realized something was amiss. And even then, well, clerical errors do happen. Laura's pen paused over her notepad. But you reported it anyway? Hospital policy, Dr. Blackwell explained, a note of regret in his voice. Any discrepancy over a certain amount has to be reported to the board and the authorities. I never imagined it would lead to this. As the conversation continued, Laura's mind worked overtime, piecing together the information. Dr. Washington's impeccable reputation, the missing supplies, the security footage, it all painted a complex picture, one that didn't quite add up. After hanging up with Dr. Blackwell, Laura stood, stretching muscles stiff from hours of sitting. She needed a change of scenery, a fresh perspective. Grabbing her jacket, she headed out of the precinct, her destination clear in her mind. 
The drive to Mercy General Hospital was short, the early afternoon traffic mercifully light. As Laura pulled into the parking lot, she took a moment to observe the bustling activity around the entrance. Ambulances arriving, families coming and going, staff hurrying between buildings, the constant ebb and flow of life and death that defined a hospital. Inside, the antiseptic smell and harsh lighting brought back memories of her own time spent in hospitals, both as a patient and as an investigator. She made her way to the nurse's station, flashing her badge. I'm Detective Hawkins, she introduced herself to the nurse on duty. I'm here about the investigation involving Dr. Washington. I was hoping to speak with some of his colleagues. The nurse, a middle-aged woman with kind eyes and a no-nonsense demeanor, nodded. Of course, Detective, though I hope you're here to clear his name. Dr. Washington is, well, he's one of the good ones. Laura kept her expression neutral, years of practice allowing her to hide her thoughts. I'm here to find the truth, ma'am. Nothing more, n nothing less. As she was directed towards the staff lounge, Laura couldn't help but notice the whispers that followed her, the worried glances exchanged between hospital staff. Dr. Washington's arrest had clearly shaken the entire hospital community. In the lounge, she found a group of doctors and nurses on their break. The conversation died as she entered, all eyes turning to her with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. I'm Detective Hawkins, she began, her tone professional, but not unkind. I'm investigating the case involving Dr. Washington. I'd appreciate it if you could share any information you think might be relevant. For a moment, no one spoke. Then a young resident stepped forward, his face a mask of determination. Detective, there's something you need to know something that might explain everything. Laura raised an eyebrow, her interest piqued. Go on, she encouraged. The resident, Dr. Alex Chen, glanced nervously at his colleagues before continuing. Uh, Dr. Washington, he's been running an unofficial program, helping patients who can't afford their medications or treatments. A murmur of agreement rippled through the room. An older nurse stepped forward, her eyes blazing with conviction. It's true, Elijah, Dr. Washington, he couldn't stand seeing people suffer just because they couldn't pay. He started small, bending the rules a little here and there. But over time, over time it grew, Laura finished, the pieces starting to fall into place. The missing supplies, they weren't stolen, were they? They were being distributed to those in need. Dr. Chen nodded vigorously. Exactly. Dr. Washington would take expired medications that were slated for disposal, or use leftover supplies from surgeries. Nothing that would compromise patient care here at the hospital, but enough to make a real difference for those who had nowhere else to turn. Laura's mind raced, processing this new information. It explained the discrepancies in the inventory, the after-hours access to the pharmacy, but it also raised a host of new questions and ethical dilemmas. Why didn't anyone report this? She asked, looking around the room. Surely someone must have noticed. A tense silence fell over the group. Finally, an older doctor spoke up, his voice heavy with emotion. Because we all knew it was the right thing to do, detective. We've all seen patients suffer, die even, because they couldn't afford treatment. Dr. Washington was doing what we all wished we had the courage to do. Laura absorbed this, her expression thoughtful. I understand the motivation, but you must realize the legal implications of what you're telling me. Dr. Washington, all of you, you could face serious consequences. The nurse who had spoken earlier stepped forward, her chin raised defiantly. We're aware of the risks, detective, but when you've held the hand of a child who's in pain because their parents can't afford medication, or watched a senior citizen choose between food and life-saving drugs, well, sometimes the law and what's right aren't the same thing. As Laura looked around the room, she saw the same determination reflected in every face. These healthcare professionals had made a choice to support their colleague and did, by extension, to challenge a system they saw as fundamentally flawed. Thanking the group for their honesty, Laura left the hospital, her mind whirling with the implications of what she'd learned. The case had just become infinitely more complex. 
It was no longer a simple matter of theft, but a moral and ethical quandary that struck at the heart of the healthcare system. Back at the precinct, Laura sequestered herself in her office, poring over the evidence with fresh eyes. The security footage that had seemed so damning now told a different story. Not of a doctor stealing supplies, but of one going to extraordinary lengths to help those in need. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across her desk, Laura made a decision. She picked up her phone and dialed a number she rarely used. District Attorney's Office, this is James Thompson. James, it's Laura Hawkins. We need to talk about the Washington case. It's not what we thought. The conversation that followed was tense, filled with legal jargon and ethical debates. James Thompson, ever the pragmatist, was reluctant to consider dropping the charges. Laura, you know as well as I do that good intentions don't negate illegal actions. Dr. Washington broke the law, regardless of his motivations. Laura pinched the bridge of her nose, frustration mounting. I know, James, but this case, it's not black and white. We have a chance here to address a bigger issue, to shed light on the flaws in our healthcare system. Prosecuting Dr. Washington won't solve the real problem, or... There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Finally, James spoke, his voice tired. All right, Laura, I'll hold off on pressing formal charges for now, but I want a full report on my desk by the end of the week. If we're going to pursue this, we need to be damn sure we're doing the right thing. As Laura hung up the phone, she felt a weight lift from her shoulders. She had bought some time, but the real work was just beginning. She needed to dig deeper to understand the full scope of Dr. Washington's actions and their impact on the community. Grabbing her coat, Laura headed out of the precinct. Her next stop, Dr. Washington's home. It was time to hear his side of the story, straight from the source. As she drove through the darkening streets of Springfield, Laura couldn't shake the feeling that this case would change not just Dr. Washington's life, but her own as well. The line between right and wrong, once so clear in her mind, was beginning to blur. And in that blurred space, she knew lay the truth she was seeking. The street lights flickered to life as Detective Laura Hawkins pulled up to Dr. Elijah Washington's modest suburban home. The two-story house, with its well-maintained lawn and inviting porch, seemed at odds with the image of a criminal mastermind. But then again, Laura reminded herself, nothing about this case was quite what it seemed. She took a deep breath, steeling herself for the conversation ahead. You want to This wasn't just another interrogation. It was a chance to uncover the truth behind a story that had captured the attention of the entire city. As she approached the front door, Laura noticed a figure watching her from the window. The curtain quickly fell back into place. Seconds later, the door opened, revealing a woman in her mid-forties with kind eyes and worry lines etched deep into her forehead. Mrs. Washington? Laura inquired, showing her badge. I'm Detective Hawkins. I was hoping to speak with your husband. The woman nodded, her expression a mix of wariness and relief. Please, come in. I'm Angela Washington. Elijah's in the study. Laura followed Angela through the tastefully decorated home, noting the family photos lining the walls. Dr. Washington's smiling face beamed out from pictures of graduations, family vacations, and hospital charity events. It was hard to reconcile this image with the man she'd seen in the mug shots. The study door was ajar and Laura could hear low voices inside. As Angela knocked softly, the conversation ceased. Elijah, Detective Hawkins is here to see you. There was a moment of silence before a deep voice responded. Send her in, please. Laura entered the room to find Dr. Washington seated behind a large oak desk. His lawyer, Sarah Goldstein, standing protectively at his side. The tension in the air was palpable. Dr. Washington, Miss Goldstein. Laura greeted them, taking the seat offered to her. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. Dr. Washington leaned forward, his eyes meeting Laura's with an innocent intensity that caught her off guard. Detective, I hope you're here to tell me this nightmare is over, that you've realized this is all a terrible mistake. 
Laura held his gaze, her voice steady. That's what I'm here to find out, Dr. Washington. I've spoken with your colleagues at the hospital, and they've shared some interesting information. I was hoping to hear your side of the story. I see car. Sarah Goldstein stepped forward, her voice sharp. Detective, I hope you've advised my client of his rights. Anything he says here? It's all right, Sarah. Dr. Washington interrupted, holding up a hand. I have nothing to hide, not anymore. He turned back to Laura, a mix of defiance and resignation in his eyes. What do you want to know, detective? For the next hour, Dr. Washington laid out the full story. He spoke of patients turned away because they couldn't afford treatment, of children suffering needlessly, of a system that seemed designed to help those who needed it least. He described how it had started small, a few pills here, some bandages there, and how it had grown into a full-scale operation. I know what I did was against the law, he concluded, his voice heavy with emotion, but I swore an oath to do no harm. Turning my back on people who needed help, that felt like the greater crime. Laura listened intently, her detective's mind cataloging every detail, while her human heart grappled with the moral complexity of the situation. When Dr. Washington finished, she leaned back in her chair, processing everything she'd heard. Dr. Washington, she began carefully, I understand your motivations, but you must realize the position you've put yourself in. The hospital, the police department, the DA's office, they can't just look the other way. Sarah Goldstein jumped in, her tone forceful. My client was acting out of compassion, detective. Surely that counts for something in your investigation. Laura held up a hand, her expression thoughtful. It does, Miss Goldstein, but compassion doesn't negate the law. What we need to figure out now is how to move forward. Dr. Washington leaned forward, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Does this mean you believe me? That you understand why I did what I did? Laura chose her words carefully. I believe that your intentions were good, Dr. Washington, but good intentions don't always lead to good outcomes. We need to look at the bigger picture here. She stood up, pacing the room as she gathered her thoughts. Here's what I propose. Dr. Washington, I want a full accounting of everything you've done, every pill, every bandage, every patient you've helped. I want to know where the supplies went and how they were used. Sarah started to object, but Laura continued, in exchange, I'll recommend to the DA that we hold off on pressing charges. Instead, we'll work with the hospital to implement a proper program for low-income patients, one that operates within the bounds of the law. Dr. Washington and Sarah exchanged a look, a silent conversation passing between them. Finally, Dr. Washington nodded. I'll cooperate fully, detective, but I need your assurance that the people I've helped won't face any consequences. Laura nodded, relief washing over her. You have my word. Our focus here is on fixing the system, not punishing those who've been failed by it. As Laura left the Washington home that evening, she felt a mix of emotions. The case was far from closed, but for the first time since it began, she felt like they were moving in the right direction. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity. Laura worked closely with Dr. Washington, his lawyer, and the hospital administration to piece together the full scope of his unofficial program. The more she learned, the more she realized just how broken the healthcare system truly was. There were stories that broke her heart. A single mother who'd been rationing her son's asthma medication, an elderly man who'd been choosing between food and his heart pills, a young woman whose cancer had gone untreated because she couldn't afford the copays. But there were also stories of hope lives saved families kept together, communities rallying around their most vulnerable members. Dr. Washington's actions, while illegal, had made a real difference in countless lives. As the investigation progressed, Laura found herself becoming an unlikely advocate for change. She met with community leaders, healthcare providers, and policymakers, sharing what she'd learned and pushing for meaningful reforms. The breakthrough came on a rainy Tuesday afternoon Laura had just finished presenting her findings to the hospital board when Dr. Marcus Blackwell approached her, a thoughtful expression on his face. Detective Hawkins, he began, his voice low, what you've uncovered here, it's troubling to say the least. 
but it's also an opportunity, an opportunity to do better. Laura raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What are you proposing, Dr. Blackwell? He smiled, a glimmer of excitement in his eyes. A new program, one that builds on what Dr. Washington started, but does it the right way. We'll call it the Compassionate Care Initiative. Discounted medications, sliding scale payments, community outreach, the works. Laura felt a surge of hope. That sounds promising, Dr. Blackwell. Uh, but how will you fund it? We'll redirect some of our marketing budget, apply for grants, partner with pharmaceutical companies. It won't be easy, but after what you've shown us, we can't in good conscience continue with business as usual. As the details of the new program took shape, Laura couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. This was why she'd become a detective, not just to catch criminals, but to serve her community, to make a real difference in people's lives. The day finally came when Laura presented her final report to District Attorney James Thompson. She'd laid out everything Dr. Washington's actions, the lives he'd impacted, and the systemic issues that had led to the whole situation. James leaned back in his chair, a wry smile on his face. You know, Laura, when you first came to me about this case, I thought you'd lost your mind. But this, he tapped the report. This is something else entirely. Laura held her breath, waiting for his decision. We're not going to press charges against Dr. Washington, James announced. Instead, we're going to use this case as a catalyst for change. I've already spoken with the mayor and the state health department. We're going to push for policy reforms, increased funding for community health initiatives, the works. Relief washed over Laura. And Dr. Washington? James nodded. He'll be reinstated at the hospital, with the condition that he oversees the new Compassionate Care Initiative. His medical license will be placed on probation for two years, but he'll be able to continue practicing. As Laura left the DA's office, she felt a weight lift from her shoulders. The case that had consumed her life for the past month was finally closed, but its impact would be felt for years to come. She drove to Mercy General Hospital, where Dr. Washington was waiting to hear the news. As she walked through the familiar corridors, she saw hope in the eyes of the staff, hope for a better future, a more compassionate healthcare system. She found Dr. Washington in his office, pacing nervously. When she entered, he froze, searching her face for any clue to his fate. Laura smiled, extending her hand. Congratulations, Dr. Washington. You're going back to work. The relief on his face was palpable. He shook her hand vigorously, tears welling in his eyes. Thank you, detective. I don't know how to express my gratitude. Laura's expression turned serious. Don't thank me, Dr. Washington. Thank the people whose lives you touched and promise me you'll keep fighting for them the right way this time. Dr. Washington nodded solemnly. I promise, detective, this is just the beginning. As Laura left the hospital that day, she felt a sense of accomplishment unlike anything she'd experienced in her career. She'd set out to solve a crime, but in the process, she'd helped spark a movement. The case of Dr. Elijah Washington would be remembered not as a story of theft and deception, but as a turning point, the moment when a community came together to demand better, to do better. And for Detective Laura Hawkins, it was a powerful reminder of why she'd chosen this path. In a world often painted in shades of gray, she'd found a way to bring a little more light, a little more justice, a little more compassion. As she drove home, the setting sun painting the sky in brilliant hues, Laura couldn't help but smile. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, new cases to solve. But for now, she savored the knowledge that sometimes, just sometimes, the system could work for those who needed it most. The price of compassion had been high, but its rewards, she realized, were immeasurable. Six months had passed since the resolution of Dr. Elijah Washington's case, and Springfield was a city transformed. The Compassionate Care Initiative, born from the ashes of controversy, had taken root and begun to flourish. Detective Laura Hawkins found herself driving to Mercy General Hospital once again, but this time, her visit was one of progress rather than investigation. As she pulled into the parking lot, Laura couldn't help but notice the changes. 
A new wing had been added to the hospital, its facade adorned with a sign that read Community Health Center. The parking lot was busier than ever, filled with a diverse array of vehicles, from shiny SUVs to well-worn sedans that had seen better days. Laura made her way inside, greeted by the familiar antiseptic smell and the buzz of activity. But there was something different in the air, a sense of purpose, of hope. She approached the reception desk where a friendly face greeted her. Detective Hawkins, it's good to see you again, the receptionist Maria beamed. Dr. Washington is expecting you. He's in the new wing, room 105. Laura nodded her thanks and headed down the freshly painted hallway. As she walked, she overheard snippets of conversation that made her smile. And with the sliding scale, I can actually afford my treatments now, an elderly man was saying to his nurse. The community outreach program has been a godsend, a young mother told her doctor. I don't know what we would have done without it. Room 105 was bustling with activity. Dr. Elijah Washington stood at the center of it all, a clipboard in hand, directing a team of doctors and nurses with the confidence of a seasoned conductor leading an orchestra. When he spotted Laura, his face lit up. Detective Hawkins, right on time. Come in, come in. We're just wrapping up our morning briefing. What a cool... Laura stepped into the room, taking in the scene. Whiteboards covered the walls, filled with charts, graphs, and lists of names. A large screen displayed real-time data on patient care and resource allocation. As the team dispersed, Dr. Washington turned his full attention to Laura. It's good to see you, Detective. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Laura shook her head, a small smile playing on her lips. I just did my job, Dr. Washington. You're the one who's making a real difference here. He gestured for her to follow him as he began a tour of the new facility. We've come a long way in six months, he explained as they walked. The Compassionate Care Initiative has already helped over a thousand patients who would have otherwise fallen through the cracks. They passed by examination rooms where doctors were treating patients, a pharmacy where a pharmacist was explaining medication regimens to an attentive group, and a community room where a nutrition class was in full swing. We're not just treating illnesses anymore, Dr. Washington continued, his voice filled with passion. We're addressing the root causes of health disparities in our community. Education, prevention, follow-up care, it's all part of the package now. As they turned a corner, Laura spotted a familiar face, Sarah Goldstein, Dr. Washington's lawyer during the investigation. She was deep in conversation with a group of people in suits. Dr. Washington noticed Laura's curious glance. Ah, that's our legal team. Sarah's been instrumental in navigating the regulatory challenges we've faced. She's helping us expand the program to other hospitals in the state. Laura raised an eyebrow, impressed. Looks like this case changed her career trajectory as well. Dr. Washington nodded, a hint of pride in his voice. Many of us found our true calling through this ordeal. Speaking of which, there's someone I'd like you to meet. He led Laura to a small office where a young man was poring over a stack of papers. Alex, do you have a moment? The young doctor looked up and Laura recognized him as Dr. Alex Chen, the resident who had first spoken up about Dr. Washington's unofficial program during her investigation. Detective Hawkins, it's good to see you again, Alex said, standing to shake her hand. I don't know if you remember me, but... Of course I remember. Laura interrupted with a smile. Your courage in speaking up was a turning point in the investigation. Alex blushed slightly at the compliment. I was just doing what I thought was right, and now, well... He gestured to the office around him. I'm heading up our data analysis team. We're tracking the impact of the initiative, identifying trends, and finding ways to improve our services. Laura listened intently as Alex explained some of their findings decreased emergency room visits, improved chronic disease management, higher vaccination rates in underserved communities. The numbers were impressive, but it was the stories behind them that truly moved her. As they left Alex's office, Dr. Washington's pager beeped. He glanced at it and sighed. Duty calls. Would you mind if we continued this tour later? There's an emergency in the ER I need to attend to. Laura nodded understandingly. 
Of course. Mind if I tag along? I'd like to see how things are running in the trenches, so to speak. Dr. Washington agreed, and they hurried to the emergency room. The scene that greeted them was controlled chaos. Nurses and doctors moving with purpose, patients being triaged efficiently. A young woman was being wheeled in on a gurney, her face contorted in pain. Dr. Washington quickly assessed the situation, barking orders to his team. 22-year-old female, severe abdominal pain, possible appendicitis, a nurse reported. As Dr. Washington began his examination, Laura overheard a conversation between the patient and another nurse. I don't... I don't have insurance, the young woman gasped between waves of pain. I can't afford... The nurse gently shushed her. Don't worry about that now, honey. We'll take care of you first, and then we'll figure out the rest. That's what the Compassionate Care Initiative is all about. Laura watched as relief washed over the patient's face quickly replaced by another grimace of pain. Dr. Washington worked quickly, ordering tests and pain medication. We'll need to prep her for surgery, he announced after reviewing the results. Classic case of acute appendicitis. We caught it just in time. As the team rushed the patient to the operating room, Dr. Washington turned to Laura. Six months ago, that young woman might have waited too long to come in, fearing the cost. Her appendix could have ruptured, she could have died from a treatable condition, all because of financial concerns. Laura nodded solemnly, the reality of the situation sinking in. And now? Now, Dr. Washington said with a smile, she'll receive the care she needs. We'll work with her on a payment plan she can afford, connect her with resources for ongoing care, maybe even help her find insurance options. We're not just saving lives in the moment, we're changing them for the long term. As they walked back towards Dr. Washington's office, Laura's mind was reeling from everything she'd seen. The, the Compassionate Care Initiative wasn't just a program. It was a revolution in healthcare, born from a moment of crisis and nurtured by the dedication of people who refused to accept the status quo. Dr. Washington noticed Laura's curious glance. Ah, that's our legal team. Sarah's been instrumental in navigating the regulatory challenges we've faced. She's helping us expand the program to other hospitals in the state. Laura raised an eyebrow, impressed. Looks like this case changed her career trajectory as well. Dr. Washington nodded, a hint of pride in his voice. Many of us found our true calling through this ordeal. Speaking of which, there's someone I'd like you to meet. He led Laura to a small office where a young man was poring over a stack of papers. Alex, do you have a moment? The young doctor looked up, and Laura recognized him as Dr. Alex Chen, the resident who had first spoken up about Dr. Washington's unofficial program during her investigation. Detective Hawkins, it's good to see you again, Alex said, standing to shake her hand. I don't know if you remember me, but... Of course I remember, Laura interrupted with a smile. Your courage in speaking up was a turning point in the investigation. Alex blushed slightly at the compliment. I was just doing what I thought was right. And now, well, he gestured to the office around him. I'm heading up our data analysis team. We're tracking the impact of the initiative, identifying trends, and finding ways to improve our services. Laura listened intently as Alex explained some of their findings. Decreased emergency room visits, improved chronic disease management, higher vaccination rates in underserved communities. The numbers were impressive but it was the stories behind them that truly moved her. As they left Alex's office, Dr. Washington's pager beeped. He glanced at it and sighed. Duty calls. Would you mind if we continued this tour later? There's an emergency in the ER I need to attend to. Laura nodded understandingly. Of course. Mind if I tag along? I'd like to see how things are running in the trenches, so to speak. Dr. Washington agreed, and they hurried to the emergency room. The scene that greeted them was controlled chaos, nurses and doctors moving with purpose, patients being triaged efficiently. A young woman was being wheeled in on a gurney, her face contorted in pain. Dr. Washington quickly assessed the situation, barking orders to his team, 22-year-old female, severe abdominal pain, possible appendicitis, a nurse reported. 
As Dr. Washington began his examination, Laura overheard a conversation between the patient and another nurse. I don't, I don't have insurance. The young woman gasped between waves of pain. I can't afford. The nurse gently shushed her. Don't worry about that now, honey. We'll take care of you first, and then we'll figure out the rest. That's what the Compassionate Care Initiative is all about. Laura watched as relief washed over the patient's face, quickly replaced by another grimace of pain. Dr. Washington worked quickly, ordering tests and pain medication. We'll need to prep her for surgery, he announced after reviewing the results. Classic case of acute appendicitis. We caught it just in time. As the team rushed the patient to the operating room, Dr. Washington turned to Laura. Six months ago, that young woman might have waited too long to come in, fearing the cost. Her appendix could have ruptured. She could have died from a treatable condition, all because of financial concerns. Laura nodded solemnly, the reality of the situation sinking in. And now? Now, Dr. Washington said with a smile, she'll receive the care she needs. We'll work with her on a payment plan she can afford, connect her with resources for ongoing care, maybe even help her find insurance options. We're not just saving lives in the moment, we're changing them for the long term. As they walked back towards Dr. Washington's office, Laura's mind was reeling from everything she'd seen. The, the Compassionate Care Initiative wasn't just a program. It was a revolution in healthcare, born from a moment of crisis and nurtured by the dedication of people who refused to accept the status quo. Laura's grip tightened on the steering wheel. I'm on my way, Captain. What's this about? I'll brief you when you get here. Just prepare yourself. This could get messy. The line went dead, leaving Laura with a sense of unease. She had thought the Washington case was closed, a success story for the books. What could have possibly come up now? Twenty minutes later, Laura strode into the precinct, making a beeline for Captain Rodriguez's office. She found him poring over a stack of documents, his face etched with concern. Captain, what's going on? Laura asked as she closed the door behind her. Rodriguez looked up, his eyes tired. Take a seat, Laura. We've got a situation on our hands. As Laura sat, the captain pushed a file across the desk to her. This just came in from the FBI. They're launching an investigation into the Compassionate Care Initiative. Laura's heart sank as she opened the file. On what grounds? They're claiming potential fraud and misuse of federal funds, Rodriguez explained. Apparently, some big players in the healthcare industry have been raising concerns about the program's rapid expansion and its impact on their bottom line. Laura skimmed through the documents, her frown deepening with each page. This is ridiculous. The initiative is saving lives, reducing healthcare costs in the long run. How can they possibly claim fraud? Rodriguez sighed, leaning back in his chair. You and I know that, Laura but we're dealing with powerful interests here. Pharmaceutical companies, insurance giants, they stand to lose a lot if the compassionate care model becomes the new standard. Laura closed the file, her jaw set in determination. So what do we do? We can't just let them shut this down. We are not going to, Rodriguez assured her, but we need to tread carefully. The FBI is sending a team to Springfield next week to begin their investigation. They've requested our cooperation. Laura nodded slowly, her detective's mind already formulating a plan. We'll give them our full cooperation, of course, but we'll also make sure they see the whole picture, not just numbers on a spreadsheet, but the real impact the initiative is having on people's lives. Rodriguez smiled, a glimmer of pride in his eyes. I was hoping you'd say that. I want you to be our liaison with the FBI team. Nobody knows this case better than you do. Laura stood, her resolve strengthening. I'll get right on it, Captain. We've come too far to let this fall apart now. As she left the captain's office, Laura's phone buzzed with a text. It was from Dr. Washington. Need to talk, it's urgent. Can you meet? Laura quickly replied, setting up a meeting for that evening. She had a feeling Dr. Washington had just received similar news. The rest of the day passed in a blur of phone calls and paperwork. Laura reached out to her contacts, gathering as much information as she could about the impending investigation. 
By the time she met Dr. Washington at a quiet cafe near the hospital, she had a clearer picture of what they were up against. Dr. Washington was already there when she arrived, nursing a cup of coffee with a troubled expression. He stood as Laura approached, the lines on his face deeper than she remembered. Laura, thank you for coming, he said, gesturing for her to sit. I assume you've heard the news? Laura nodded, ordering a coffee for herself before settling into her chair. The FBI investigation? Yeah, I got briefed this afternoon. How are you holding up? Elijah ran a hand through his graying hair, his exhaustion evident. Honestly, I'm worried. We've worked so hard to build this program to help people who had nowhere else to turn. And now, to have it all threatened because we're cutting into someone's profit margin? It's disheartening. Laura reached across the table, placing a reassuring hand on his arm. We're not going to let that happen, Elijah. The Compassionate Care Initiative is too important to fail. He looked up, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. You really think we can fight this? I know we can, Laura said firmly, but we need to be smart about it. This isn't just a local issue anymore. We're up against some powerful interests, and we need to be prepared. For the next hour, they strategized. Laura shared what she knew about the upcoming investigation, while Elijah filled her in on the initiative's latest developments and challenges. They agreed on a plan of action transparency would be key, as would demonstrating the tangible impact of the program on the community. As their meeting wound down, Elijah's phone buzzed. He glanced at it, his eyebrows shooting up in surprise. Well, that's interesting timing, he murmured. What is it? Laura asked, curiosity piqued. Elijah showed her the screen. It was an email from a national news network requesting an interview about the Compassionate Care Initiative. They want to do a feature story on the program, he explained. Talk about our success here in Springfield and the potential for national expansion. Laura leaned back, a thoughtful expression on her face. This could be exactly what we need, a chance to get our side of the story out there, to show the public what's really at stake. Elijah nodded slowly, but there was hesitation in his eyes. It's a double-edged sword, though. More publicity means more scrutiny. Are we ready for that level of attention? We have to be, Laura said firmly. This isn't just about Springfield anymore, Elijah. What we've started here? It could change healthcare in this country. We owe it to every patient who's been helped by the initiative and to every person who's still struggling to fight for this. Elijah sat silent for a moment, weighing her words. Finally, he nodded, a new determination settling over his features. You're right. We've come too far to back down now. I'll set up the interview. As they parted ways that evening, Laura felt a mix of anticipation and trepidation. The coming weeks would be crucial, not just for the Compassionate Care Initiative, but for the future of healthcare in their community and potentially the entire nation. The next morning, Laura arrived at the house and at the precinct early, determined to get a head start on preparations for the FBI investigation. She was surprised to find she wasn't the only one with that idea. Officer Jake Miller was already at his desk, surrounded by stacks of files. Miller, what are you doing here so early? Laura asked, setting down her coffee. Jake looked up, dark circles under his eyes, suggesting he'd been there for hours. Detective Hawkins, I heard about the FBI investigation. I've been going through all our files on the Washington case, trying to make sure we haven't missed anything. Laura felt a surge of pride in her young colleague's dedication. Good thinking, Miller. Find anything interesting? Jake nodded enthusiastically. Actually, yes. I've been cross-referencing patient data from before and after the initiative started. The results are pretty incredible. He handed Laura a report filled with charts and graphs. As she skimmed it, her eyes widened. Miller, this is excellent work. These numbers, they really drive home the impact of the program. Jake beamed at the praise. Thanks, detective. I thought it might help when the FBI team arrives. Hard data to back up what we've all seen firsthand. Laura clapped him on the shoulder. This is exactly what we need. Keep digging. And Miller, good job. As the day progressed, Laura found herself at the center of a whirlwind of activity. 
She coordinated with the hospital to prepare for the FBI's arrival, briefed her fellow officers on what to expect, and worked with the department's PR team to craft a statement for the press. By late afternoon, she was back in Captain Rodriguez's office, updating him on their progress. Sounds like we're as ready as we can be, Rodriguez said after Laura finished her report. But Laura, I need to make sure you understand the stakes here. This investigation, it's not just about Dr. Washington or even the initiative anymore. It's about the integrity of our entire department. Laura nodded solemnly. I understand, Captain. We'll cooperate fully with the FBI, but we'll also make sure they see the whole picture. The Compassionate Care Initiative is making a real difference in people's lives. We can't let bureaucracy or corporate interests undermine that. Rodriguez leaned forward, his expression serious. I agree, but we need to be prepared for every possibility. If there's even a hint of impropriety, no matter how well-intentioned, it could bring down not just the initiative, but everyone involved in the original case, including you, Laura. The weight of his words settled heavily on Laura's shoulders. She knew the risks when she'd decided to support Dr. Washington's program, but hearing them laid out so bluntly was sobering. I understand the risks, Captain, she said firmly, but I also know we did the right thing, and I'm prepared to stand by that decision, whatever the consequences. Rodriguez held her gaze for a long moment before nodding. That's what I thought you'd say. All right, then. Let's make sure we're ready to show the FBI exactly why this program is worth fighting for. As Laura left the captain's office, her phone buzzed with a message from Dr. Washington. The national news crew had arrived at the hospital to begin filming their feature story. Laura smiled to herself. Perfect timing. By the time the FBI team arrived next week, the whole country would know about the Compassionate Care Initiative and the lives it was changing. She texted back a quick message of support to Elijah, then turned her attention to the mountain of work still ahead. The challenge they faced was daunting, but Laura felt a sense of purpose she hadn't experienced since she first joined the force. This wasn't just about solving a crime or closing a case. It was about fighting for something bigger than herself, something that could change countless lives for the better. As she settled back at her desk, Laura glanced at the photo of Dr. Washington that still sat in the case file. From suspected criminal to healthcare revolutionary, it had been quite a journey. All right, Elijah, she murmured to herself. Let's show them what compassion can really do. With renewed determination, Laura dove back into her work. The FBI investigation loomed on the horizon, but she was ready for the fight ahead. After all, as the plaque at Mercy General reminded her, the price of compassion might be high, but the cost of indifference was immeasurable. And Laura Hawkins was not one to stand idly by while others paid that price. The week leading up to the FBI's arrival in Springfield passed in a blur of preparation and anticipation. Detective Laura Hawkins found herself at the center of a storm, coordinating between the police department, Mercy General Hospital, and Dr. Elijah Washington's team. The national news feature on the Compassionate Care Initiative had aired, sparking a firestorm of public interest and debate. As Laura pulled into the precinct parking lot on the morning the FBI team was set to arrive, she noticed a crowd gathered outside. Journalists, camera crews, and curious onlookers filled the sidewalk, their chatter creating a low buzz of excitement and tension. She took a deep breath, steeling herself for the day ahead. This was it, the moment that could determine the fate of the Compassionate Care Initiative and potentially the future of healthcare in their community and beyond. Inside, the precinct was a hive of activity, Officers hurried back and forth, carrying files and speaking in hushed tones. Captain Rodriguez met Laura at the door of the conference room they had set up for the FBI team. They're on their way, he said, his voice low. You ready for this, Hawkins? Laura nodded, her jaw set with determination. As ready as I'll ever be, Captain. Let's show them what we've got. The FBI team arrived precisely on schedule. Three agents led by a stern-faced woman who introduced herself as Special Agent Diane Carter. 
Laura led them to the conference room where Dr. Washington and his legal team, including Sarah Goldstein, were already waiting. Thank you for your cooperation, Agent Carter began, her tone businesslike. We'll be conducting a thorough investigation into the Compassionate Care Initiative, its funding sources, and its impact on the local healthcare market. We expect full transparency from all parties involved. Laura stepped forward. Of course, Agent Carter. We're prepared to provide you with all the information you need. But before we begin, I think it's important that you understand the full scope of what the initiative has accomplished. Carter raised an eyebrow. We've read the reports, Detective Hawkins. We're here to verify the facts, not to be swayed by emotional appeals. With all due respect, Agent, Laura countered, the facts include the lives that have been changed by this program. We've prepared a presentation that I think you'll find illuminating. For the next hour, Laura and Dr. Washington walked the FBI team through the initiative's journey, from its controversial beginnings to its current status as a model for compassionate, accessible health care. They presented data on reduced emergency room visits, improved health outcomes in underserved communities, and the program's cost-saving measures. But it was the personal stories that seemed to have the most impact. Laura had arranged for several patients to share their experiences via video testimonials. There was Maria, a single mother whose son's life-threatening asthma was now under control thanks to affordable medication. And John, an elderly veteran who no longer had to choose between food and his heart medication. As the presentation concluded, Laura could see a subtle shift in the FBI agent's demeanor. Agent Carter's stern expression had softened slightly and her colleagues were exchanging thoughtful glances. This is impressive, Carter admitted, but it doesn't change the fact that there are serious allegations of fraud and misuse of funds. We need to investigate thoroughly. Dr. Washington stepped forward, his voice steady. We understand, Agent Carter, and we welcome your investigation. We have nothing to hide. Every dollar, every medication, every patient interaction has been meticulously documented. We're proud of what we've built here, and we're confident it will withstand any scrutiny in the district does it still be steady ends. The next few days were intense. The FBI team combed through financial records, interviewed staff and patients, and pored over every aspect of the Compassionate Care Initiative. Laura worked tirelessly alongside them, ensuring they had access to everything they needed while also making sure they understood the context of each decision and action. On the third day of the investigation, a commotion outside the hospital caught everyone's attention. Laura and Agent Carter stepped out to find a large crowd gathered, holding signs and chanting in support of the initiative. What's going on? Carter asked, surprise evident in her voice. Laura smiled. Looks like the community has come out to show their support. This program means a lot to people here, Agent Carter. It's changed lives. As they watched, an elderly woman approached them, leaning heavily on a cane. Are you the FBI agents? She asked, her voice quavering but determined. Avi Carter nodded, and the woman continued. I'm here to tell you that this program saved my life. I couldn't afford my medications before, but now, now I can breathe again. Please, don't take this away from us. Laura could see the impact of the woman's words on Carter's face. The agent's professional mask slipped for a moment, revealing a flicker of empathy. As the investigation entered its final day, tension in the precinct was at an all-time high. Laura sat in the conference room with Dr. Washington, Sarah Goldstein, and Captain Rodriguez, waiting for the FBI team to deliver their findings. Agent Carter entered, her face unreadable. After a thorough investigation, she began, we have come to a conclusion regarding the Compassionate Care Initiative. The room held its collective breath as Carter continued. While we found some procedural irregularities in the program's early stages, there is no evidence of fraud or intentional misuse of funds. In fact, the initiative appears to be operating with a level of efficiency and positive impact that is, frankly, remarkable. The relief in the room was palpable. Dr. Washington let out a long breath, squeezing Sarah's hand. Laura felt a weight lift from her shoulders, but she knew it wasn't over yet. However, 
Carter continued. The rapid expansion of the program and its disruptive effect on the healthcare market have raised concerns at higher levels. There will need to be adjustments made to ensure full compliance with federal regulations moving forward. Dr. Washington nodded. We're willing to make any necessary changes. The important thing is that we can continue helping people. Carter allowed herself a small smile. Yep, Todd's. Dr. Washington, what you've built here is impressive. It's not often we see a program that delivers on its promises so effectively. I'll be recommending that the Compassionate Care Initiative be used as a model for healthcare reform on a national level. The room erupted in smiles and congratulations, but Laura's detective instincts told her there was more to come. Agent Carter, she said, what about the complaints from the healthcare industry? The ones that sparked this investigation in the first place? Carter's expression turned serious. That's the challenging part. You've made some powerful enemies, Dr. Washington. Pharmaceutical companies, insurance providers, they're not going to give up their profit margins without a fight. You've proven that healthcare can be both compassionate and cost-effective, and that threatens their bottom line. Dr. Washington stood, his voice filled with quiet determination. Then, we'll keep fighting. We've come too far to back down now. The people we serve deserve nothing less. Laura nodded in agreement, and we'll be right there with you every step of the way. As the FBI team prepared to leave, Agent Carter pulled Laura aside. Detective Hawkins, I have to say, your work on this case has been exemplary. You saw beyond the surface allegations to the heart of what was really happening here. That's rare. Laura felt a surge of pride at the agent's words. Thank you, Agent Carter. I just followed the evidence wherever it led. Carter handed her a card. If you ever consider a career change, give me a call. The Bureau could use investigators like you. As Laura watched the FBI team drive away, she felt a mix of emotions, relief, pride, and a renewed sense of purpose. The Compassionate Care Initiative had survived its greatest challenge yet, but she knew the fight was far from over. Dr. Washington joined her outside, his face thoughtful. What now, Laura? he asked. She turned to him a determined smile on her face. Now? We take this show on the road, Elijah. The whole country has seen what we've done here in Springfield. It's time to help other communities do the same. He nodded, excitement building in his eyes. You're right. This is bigger than just our city now. It's a movement. Over the next few months, Laura found herself traveling across the country, helping other cities implement their own versions of the Compassionate Care Initiative. She worked closely with local law enforcement, healthcare providers, and community leaders, sharing the lessons learned from Springfield's experience. The challenges were many resistant bureaucracies, skeptical officials, and always the looming presence of powerful healthcare industry lobbyists. But everywhere they went, Laura and Dr. Washington found allies, people who believed in their vision of a more compassionate, accessible healthcare system. One year after the FBI investigation, Laura stood on a stage in Washington, D.C., flanked by Dr. Washington, Sarah Goldstein, and a group of healthcare reform advocates. They were there to testify before a congressional committee on the success of the Compassionate Care Initiative and its potential as a national model. As Laura looked out at the packed hearing room, she couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought them here. From a controversial arrest to a revolutionary healthcare program, it had been a wild ride. She thought of all the lives that had been changed, the patients who could now afford their medications, the families no longer bankrupted by medical bills, the communities growing healthier and stronger. And she thought of how it all started with one doctor who refused to turn his back on those in need, and one detective who chose to look beyond the surface to find the truth. As she stepped up to the microphone to begin her testimony, Laura felt a sense of purpose stronger than anything she'd experienced in her career. This was why she'd become a detective, not just to solve crimes, but to serve her community, to fight for justice in all its forms. Members of the committee, she began, her voice clear and confident. I'm here today to tell you about a healthcare revolution that began in a small city, but has the power to transform our nation. As Laura spoke, 
she knew that the fight was far from over. There would be more challenges, more obstacles to overcome. But she also knew that they had started something powerful, something that couldn't be stopped. The price of compassion had been high, careers risked, reputations challenged, powerful enemies made. But as Laura looked at the faces of her colleagues and the supporters filling the room, she knew it had been worth every moment. This was more than just a program now. It was a movement, a call to action, a reminder that when people come together for the greater good, real change is possible. And for Detective Laura Hawkins, it was the case that had become a cause one she would champion for the rest of her career and beyond. As she concluded her testimony, Laura's final words echoed through the chamber, a testament to the power of compassion and the unyielding pursuit of justice. The price of compassion may be high, but the cost of indifference is, is immeasurable. We choose compassion, always, and we invite you, members of this committee and all Americans, to join us in this choice. Together, we can build a healthcare system that truly serves all people, regardless of their circumstances. This is not just a dream, we've proven it's possible. Now it's time to make it a reality for every American. The room erupted in applause, and as Laura looked out at the sea of faces, hopeful, determined, ready for change, she knew that this was just the beginning. The story of the Compassionate Care Initiative, born from a moment of crisis in Springfield, was about to become a national narrative of hope and transformation. And Detective Laura Hawkins, the woman who had once set out simply to solve a case, found herself at the heart of a movement that would define her life's work, proving once and for all that true justice and compassion could go hand in hand, changing lives and healing communities in ways she had never imagined possible. If you enjoyed this story, press on another video you see on the screen for more amazing tales. Until next time.